Welcome to The Philanthropeneur Show, hosted by Dr. Victoria Boyd, designed to offer tips, strategies, and insights to empower nonprofits and entrepreneurs with sustainable win-win solutions. The Philanthropeneur Show is sponsored by The Philanthropeneur Foundation, building capacity through education and professional services. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Philanthropeneur Show. This is Dr. Victoria Boyd, president and founder of The Galaxy Group, and my co-host, Heidi Anderson, founder of Credit Care and president of Electronic Commerce International. And we are thrilled to have on the show today with us Sir Chef Bruno Serrato. Heidi, do we have to do the show on one knee, being that he is a knight and all? I'm so excited. Tell our audience more about Sir Chef Serrato and welcome him to the show. Oh, buongiorno, uh, thank you, buongiorno. Hello, hello, Chef. What? I was just going to tell them how we, how we met. So, um, yeah, I was so blessed to meet uh, Chef Bruno at CEO Space in July. He is such a warm, wonderful, generous man and so amazingly humble considering his worldwide accomplishments. With all of his huge media exposure and incredibly busy schedule, I'm especially thrilled that he agreed to join us on the Philanthropreneur Show. So uh, let me Thank tell you, you a little bit more about Sir Chef. Oh, say hi. Uh, I'm just going to kind of give him your, your bio a little bit, and then we'll uh, – um, get, get into the questions and stuff. So, uh, Sir Chef Bruno Serrato is the owner of award winning restaurant Anaheim White House and the founder of life changing charity Katarina's Club. Bruno's celebrity status came in 2011 when Katie Couric of CBS, People Magazine, CNN, Fox, ABC, Univision, and International Magazines wow, that's a mouthful from countries all over the world, such as Japan, Sweden, Spain, Italy, France, Hong Kong, and South America, started to feature Bruno for his new passion, Feeding the Kids in America. CNN nominated him as one of 2011's top 10 CNN heroes over thousands of people around the world. Over the past eight years, Bruno has served over 500,000 meals to hungry children in Anaheim, all while operating a successful Italian steakhouse. After receiving the Order of Knighthood from the Italian Consulate earlier this year and experiencing, oh, I'm sorry, and expanding his charity work of feeding hungry children to his hometown of Italy, Bruno is ready to impact the world with his enormous heart and delicious cuisine. Welcome, Chef Bruno, or shall we thank call you, you Sir thank Chef? You, thank you, <laughs> <laughs> you have to call me Sir Chef Bruno, but I like Bruno also, this line. <laughs> oh, yes. great. Okay. It's a pleasure to be on your what? show. Thank you for inviting me. Oh, thank, thank you for you being so here. And I, I wanted to know, how did your charity organization, Katarina's Club, get started? Well, that was uh, April 18, uh, 2005. My mama was here for me to the vacation, visited me. In the uh, afternoon, we went to a boys' girls' club of Anaheim around like 4 o'clock, 4.30 and the director made me aware that uh, some of the kids then uh, live in a motel area as a residence oh. with their own parents, don't have dinner at night time. And I asked why. I said, well, Bruno, when you live in a motel, there's no kitchen. And uh, if, even if a mom wants to cook for them, I say, there's no kitchen, they can't. Then when I say, mom, right. well, guess what? This is a motel kids. They don't need a dinner at night time. The first thing she said, I go, wow, why don't you feed him pasta? And that was the first day, April 18, 2005. We saw the first seven-year-old kid, but uh, we didn't stop that. We've been doing that every day, seven days a week, for over eight years. And like uh, wow. you said before, you know, we already serve over half a million children so far. And um, eight years ago was the first kid. Now we are an average of 600 children every day. Wow, you sounds food, like you Mm-hmm. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. What do you feed them? What, what 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 do they get to eat? Well, usually it's a pasta because uh, obviously for income reason, you know, we have to be careful of the expense. But uh, mm-hmm. the best way that we do, we prepare a pasta because it's a good, uh, inexpensive item. And kids love pasta. They love pizzas, you all know. But mm-hmm. uh, I treat them. I put them a uh, lot of vegetable in the marinara sauce. I blend the marinara like that to get a lot of fiber. 
On the same time, sometimes we put chicken or turkey, at least to get the protein. And sometimes we also do pasta with salmon. Like that, they get the omega-3, they get the fish. I mean, uh, it's not only pasta, but we also add something in the sauce to be concerned for the health of the kids. Well, you're making me hungry, and it, yeah, it's, it's <laughs> wonderful that you make it. Absolutely, it's, and it's wonderful that you make it so healthy for them. That's that will just so much help with their growth and their their brain development and everything else that would otherwise be completely neglected. So, uh, what is your projection for the future of this? Well, my f- future, which I already started the other project, is to bring a Katerina's project nationwide, internationally. And internationally, we already started, uh, just came back from Europe a couple of days ago because I was there to open the first Caterina's project in my hometown, San Bonifacio, which is next to Verona, the city of Romeo and Juliet, and not too far away from Venice. Oh. We start to open in there, we start to feed, I think now right now we have 15 to 20 people a day. And uh, in, uh, by the end of the year, I hope we do that in Reggio Emilia, Another uh, area, um, uh, two hours driving from my hometown. This is the country, the area where the prosciutto come from, parmesan cheese come from, the Ferrari come from. They have a lot of problem with uh, starving children too. And there's a person there who would like to start Caterina's project. I uh, was on the national TV in Italy with the national famous host Antonella Clerici. She has a show called Prova del Cuoco. She say, Bruno, let's do something and do a message nationwide all over Italy to have chef to do that on every hometown. And if we do that, we will feed all the kids of Italy. And this is the same thing I want to do in, in America. I'm talking to somebody in Chicago right now. And as a matter of fact, he was on CEO Space uh, last time I was there. And he's very interested to do the Chicago Caterina's project. And what I do, the project of Caterina, I ask each person or each city who do something like that to call them the, the, uh, the program after their own mom, like that you get the passion like I do. Because if you call Aww. the project after your own mom, you know, the, you get more attached to it. And I think uh, it's going to be contagious to some people, and I'm sure that we're going to open more than one place everywhere. And that is uh, the future. Look. Of feeding the kids in America. That's beautiful. Wow. I mean, that is beautiful, especially naming. I have another your project, mom. which is uh, we start uh, um, not long time ago, almost like a year ago, maybe a year and a half ago. A lot of the motel family are people. You know, obviously in a motel you have different category of people. You have a prostitution, mm-hmm. drug addict, a pedophile. Mm-hmm. You have this type of people, but you also have a good American family, or then during the economic downturn, lost mm-hmm. home, lost job, they end up in yes. the motel room. Well, when I find out that there's also a lot of good family in the motel room, I start to realize why they stay there the longest. What well, they say, well, because when they lost everything, they don't have any more the money to move out when they find a job. I mean, uh, mm-hmm. pay the first and last month deposit to a, a new apartment. I mean, I start to qualify people and ask them if they have a job for six months, that means they're almost stable. If they have a minimum two children, I will come up with a new program to help them pay first and last month to have them move them out. Because the longer the, their children stay in that environment, the longer mm-hmm. they're exposed to the worst environment. And I mean, now yes. not only we feed them, but we also save them life in the last... Uh, Year and a half, we already moved with 45 families. Wow. You've That's really taken amazing. it beyond just feeding children, but, you know, reaching to helping the economy for these, the, these families. But, and, but you're also a restaurant owner. How long have you owned Anaheim White House Restaurant, and, and what is the history behind that beautiful building? Well, the building, it's a national historical landmark because it was built in 1909, from uh, Dr. Traxo family, which is, uh, went through a couple of families during that time of being. But uh, in 1981, someone had take over and transformed the residence as a restaurant. In 1987, I found a place for sale, and I was uh, lucky enough that I was able to get it 
I'll lease it first, you know, in rent first, and I was able to buy a few years later. But uh, it's almost 25 years, and I own it. And the house is just gorgeous because uh, the doctor, who bought the restaurant originally you know, in 1909, had nine children. I mean, it's kind of like a, I call it like a, a, a plantation house, you know. It used to be full of orange yes. trees around. Yes. And uh, right now we still have the the bedroom, your kitchen, living room, dining room, like the original home has. And now they are private uh, rooms. I mean, I have over 11 private rooms in the restaurant, and people love it because not only is great for family gathering, but also for business meeting. You can have your own private business meeting or one of the private rooms. It used to be a bedroom, you know. Or, I mean, the house is really yeah. gorgeous, and uh, I work very hard to keep that up to date because one of the years old building is always been a lot of an, um, maintenance, but uh, we take it care very well, and it's still gorgeous, standing up regal, beautifully, you know, Anaheim, which is not too far away from Disneyland, and not too far away from Anaheim Convention Center. I mean, uh, I'm going to have to make a people. side trip there. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, the, the, food, the food is also very good. <laughs> yes, oh, yes, I've heard that. Yeah, how, how, did you, yeah. how did you move from Italy to, to Anaheim? How did that happen? Well, that was in 1980, because I speak French and Italian, because I'm Italian. Mom and Dad went to France in 1951 to pick up potatoes and beets, because there was no job in Italy. And that's the reason I speak French, because I was living there for 11 years. But in 1980, I was speaking two languages, but obviously the most important language is English then, I said, well, let me go to America to learn English, and after that I can come back and get a better money or better salary. And I have a sister who was married with an American GI who came to 10 years before I did. And I called them up and said, hey, can I stay with you for a few weeks, you know, a few months to learn English? And that was 1980, but uh, I never went back. <laughs> That's the reason oh, wow. I stayed here for, it, for that reason. So you just fell, fell in love with California. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, she lived in Orange County. I mean, uh, when she was in Orange County, after almost like three weeks I was here, I was tired to stay home, just listen to CD to learn. I mean, that was a, then was like a record of cassette to learn English. I said, well, I would like to do something. I would like to work. And she said, well, let's apply somewhere. And we went to apply to a French restaurant in Brea, it's called La Vie Rose, which is just mm-hmm. closed a year ago. And uh, that's what started as a dishwasher, because that's the only position they could give me because I did not speak the language. And I went from dishwasher to busboy to waiter to captain to manager. For in five, six years' time, I was able to find the White House. And uh, I was able to get an wow. SBA loan and get it. Wow, you're wow. clearly destined to be a leader in both the restaurant industry and obviously taking care of children and families. I, I, I love the fact that the house, even that you have your restaurant in, has a history of, of lots of children living there. So <laughs> seems yeah, to be a, a spirit to it. <laughs> it is a so, uh, spirit in the house. Yes, yes. It sounds like a wonderful energy. I would love, can't wait to experience it. Uh, so I, I went through in your bio a list of a lot of accomplishments and recognition, but what's the best award you've ever received? Well, I received some very nice well, One of the latest ones was uh, Pope uh, John XXIII, uh, which uh, is an award uh, by the Italian Catholic in America. He just gave it to me. And, uh, when you receive a Pope Award, it's kind of special. But uh, the one that really kind of... Make me tremble was a CNN hero because it was televised. I think in over 80 country, 100 million people watch it. And when you picked as a CNN hero, that means you go through a process or months of investigation by CNN, and uh, people who try to be a CNN hero, you know, apply for it. There are thousands and thousands of people. I mean, when you get on the top 10 for the year, that means uh, you are recognized of you doing something amazing. And the other nine were uh, honoring, like me, they were the same thing too. I mean, I mean, this, I was, obviously I was there, and I watched their own videos of these 10 people, and they were all 10 amazing people. In fact, if you go to the uh, website of CNN Hero right now, you can vote for the top 10 
and uh, the show is probably going to be next month. I think this year they mm-hmm. do that in New York, uh, is always hosted by Anderson Cooper. I mean, that show oh. is really, the beauty part of the show, I mean, it's done extremely well, not only because movie star or star introduce you, but because they give you exposure of your charity around the world, and they do not pick up uh, rich people. I mean, you know, because rich people can give it to charity, and, but they just pick up uh, normal daily people who work very hard to support themselves, you know, but uh, they take the time to do something unreal, which is amazing. And uh, I was one of the ten, and like I say, all the ten do something amazing. I mean, when I was there, I was crying just watch my other nine uh, CNN hero, their project, the mm-hmm. way they were doing, is amazing. And it's on CNN at least 10 times during the month of December. And I recommend people to watch it. And I'm not mm-hmm. even there this year, obviously, because it's only once a year that you get to see a PSC and a Nero. But to watch the show, you, if you don't cry, you're not human, because it's <laughs> amazing. It's amazing. Mm-hmm. You see some of these people, they do something, they, they make you tremble. I mean, that show... I was introduced by Jerry Sanfield, uh, our former award, and it was very special. I mean, that's just probably one of the ones who make me on the top of the list. And yes, I see one of the, the presidential it's, humanitarian award, which that yeah. is not the one which was big here. And the sir from my Italian president, he gave me the knighthood as a sir Bruno. I mean, on the Italian side, that one was a huge one. Okay. I, well, yeah, it's hard to top any of those. <laughs> right. I mean, I tell my customer now when they come for dinner, they have to bow because I'm a sir. Yeah. Okay. And that's what I have to do. You guys must bow show. before you leave. <laughs> Absolutely. We will be happy to. As we, <laughs> yes. Uh, as we move along, we're going to take a real quick commercial break because, you know, this is the Philanthropeneur Show. Hey, are you a small business owner like me? who wants to make a charitable contribution and needs easy access to charitable giving sources that you can automate for your business for free, then I invite you to visit www.credit-cares.com. They have charitable giving options using their innovative merchant platform that helps nonprofits raise money and helps merchants make contributions at no additional cost to them using the products and services of Electronic Commerce International. Our giving options are easy to set up for small business. So if you have a business entity, we can donate in your business name. Go to www.credit-cares.com and see how you can make a difference every day by doing what you already do. Go to www.credit-cares.com and fill out the form or call 855-782-2737. For more information on how your business can be a difference maker in your community. Oh, well, welcome back, everyone. Um, Chef, before we uh, broke off for that quick commercial, you said um, one of the takeaways you would like for most of our audience to learn is um, to, to understand your focus on charity and food and that you hope that when people walk away, they will be inspired to help others. How can we all help? I mean, what what actions would you suggest to create something like Katerina's Club in other communities? Well, is um, I always tell people that is a very easy way to do. I mean, uh, we have over 4,200 boys girls club in our country, and uh, you have a lot of facility who host underprivileged children. I mean, if you find a chef in your area, you don't have to have one only. You can find different shops in your own city and ask them to donate it maybe every day. Maybe you can start with 5, 10, 20 pasta, which is very cheap because one box of pasta is probably $1.25. You can feed 70 mm-hmm. kids. I mean, with $2, you can feed 15 kids. Then you ask a chef if he can do that and have somebody to pick it up every day and you go to the area, it can be a boys girls club, it can be a YMCA, it can be anywhere which you have a free, you have kids, and you just throw the pasta there. I mean, uh, I think it's easy, easy to do so. It's just like somebody needs to just put in chef in a, a center for children together. And uh, in fact, yesterday somebody came for lunch, an example, and I was talking to him as was lunch. He says, good. Well, he said, well, I'm a director of the boys girls club. 
buena paz. Yo decía, oh, gracias mucho. Y hace ya el children were around the privilege, they need food. He said, yes, we have an average of one hundred kids. And I said, okay, well, if you have a van, come to my restaurant at four o'clock afternoon between lunch and dinner. I prepare the pasta for one hundred kids, and you can take it with you. And now we are like almost six hundred kids a day. It just doesn't take much to cook a piece of pasta, you know, as eight minutes in the hot water. I mean, if a lot of restaurateurs do that in their own town, we can feed mm-hmm. every kid in America. It's a piece of cake. So, so the kids, yeah. when they, because I was trying to figure that out, when they, they come to your restaurant and you give them the food to go? Is that how that no, works? No, the kids, the kids no. go to the Boys Girls Club or, oh, okay. different, or different entity. Like, you know, you have, like, a different place which they have kids. And uh, I cannot okay. mention the name of everyone for uh, right. uh, yeah. security, safety for the kids. Uh-huh. But uh, if you have a, a center where you don't let the children go there after school, that is the place right. you can talk to the director of that place and say, what happens if I talk to chefs and a restaurateur in my hometown, ask them to prepare food for them, and uh, you deliver them to them. And if uh, the, the club, by any chance, already have a van, you know, you just get to the van to go to this restaurant, pick up the pasta, come in back to the club, serve the children there, and when it's 5 o'clock, you want to send the clothes, the kids go back to their own place. I mean, it's really simple, very simple to do so. Right, right. Right now I have and, a three, four driver who's coming to my restaurant at 4 o'clock, pick up 600 pasta, mm-hmm. and deliver it to six facility. That's wow. That's wonderful. So, and, and, of course, we like for everybody to eat at your Anaheim House restaurant, and I think that's, that's an easy one for anyone living or traveling to Orange County, California. I know I certainly am going to make a point of it. Um, so uh, what kind of food can they expect at the White House restaurant? So is it, uh, my restaurant is based on Italian. I have an Italian base because I'm from Verona, like I say, the city of Romeo and Juliet. I mean, beside the pasta, lobster ravioli, and a pain, a matriciana, a rigatoni, we also have a lot of fish and meat. We have also buco, the breast beef, uh, and we also have, because we are Italian steakhouse, because we know that American people also like pasta and steak, we just add uh, some T-bone steak, a bison, wagyu, mm-hmm. and we have salmon, mm-hmm. white fish. But the best part of the White House is like when you come for dinner at the restaurant, if you are one of my local customers, I ask you, know, when you come to dinner and enjoy a beautiful dinner, beautiful service, why don't you bring me a box of pasta, which only costs one oh. dollar? I mean, when oh. you come, you leave them on the front desk, and you feed mm-hmm. 10 kids the same day you eat your own Absolutely. dinner. You feed the kids, and uh, we receive a lot, lot of pasta from mm-hmm. customers who stop by for dinner, and that helped me for the cost. Because as you Fantastic know, in the last five idea. years, with the yeah. economy, I also suffer myself. I mean, uh, to mm-hmm. get some help, customers now when they come for dinner, they just drop pasta. So you're yeah, really getting the community idea. involved. That's a great idea. But yeah, because lots of people are nice and they want to help me, and mm-hmm. uh, they don't know how to do it. I say, well, come you for made dinner. It, yes, you made food. everything so simple. So it's so simple. It is. I, I honestly, you know, people say, my God, Bruno, you do an amazing job. You do miracle. I say, no, no. I say, I don't do miracle. God is the only one who does. For me, uh-huh. what I do is just walking and it's very simple. Yes. Wow. So, Chef, please share your website and any social media so our listeners can find you and become involved, too. I mean, you've made it so simple for us. Well, the easiest way to go to my, go to my website, which is uh, Anaheim whitehouse.com and beside the restaurant website you will see a click for Katerina which is the name of my mom it is the name also of my foundation for the children I mean if you just want to come for dinner anaheimwhitehouse.com you see everything about the food at the restaurant and if you want to help the charity you just click on Katerina and uh, we can take any help as possible for the foundation to help with the children I mean uh is uh, not only the restaurant is gorgeous and beautiful, but you also can help to feed in the kids in America when you go to my website, AnaheimWhiteHouse.com. We would definitely put that on our website, too, the philanthropist.com, to make sure everybody can find it. I, I really want to thank you for being on the show. Um, 
we're going to try and get everybody involved. I mean, you've made it so uh, easy, and I hope we have a chance to talk more in the future. I'm just, I want to jump in my car right now and drive to the White House so I can have <laughs> I'm open for lunch dinner. today, then you have time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, so thank you so much for being on our show. And I, I really thank can't you. wait to come to, to eat there. I, I get to Orange County pretty frequently, so we will make it a point to come see you. Thank you. Absolutely. Ciao, everybody. Ciao. Thank you ciao, so much. Ciao, ciao, ciao. <laughs> well, this is the time for our philanthropist show tip. Each show we will offer a tidbit of information to build a philanthropist movement. Here's the tip. Various states whose laws regulate corporate governance have begun to catch up with the reality that, that not every investor or shareholder subscribes to the view that greed is good. The traditional three sectors of government, for-profit, and non-profit are now joined by a fourth-sector model. The L3C, Low Profit Limited Liability Company, a hybrid between a non-profit and for-profit corporation, the L3C has primarily charitable purpose with profit-making as a secondary purpose. Vermont, Rhode Island, Maine, Michigan, Illinois, North Carolina, Utah, Louisiana, and Wyoming recognize the L3C model. The L3C structure attempts to attract program-related investments. L3Cs, in contrast to tax-exempt charities, can distribute post-tax profits to its owners. Hmm. The philanthropineur.com and the Galaxy Group, LV.com, are two key resources supporting small business and nonprofit needs. The Galaxy Group offers consulting in all areas of organizational development and growth. Also, the Nuts and Bolts Nonprofit Training Series, currently a live training, will launch January 2014 as a webinar series, still the third Tuesday of each month, to help individuals build their nonprofit knowledge and professional skill set. The Galaxy Group strives to build strong foundation and enduring success by building capacity internally and externally. Find information and details at thegalaxygrouplv.com. Heidi and I are excited to bring you the Philanthropeneur Show. However, did you know that there are additional Philanthropeneur resources and opportunities? The Philanthropeneur Magazine, a digital publication, will be the hub and resources for everything Philanthropeneur. The preview, October edition, is available now. The premiere launch is January 2014, jam-packed with information, tips, and resources. It will be the gateway to find everything you need and reach the clients you want. Do you love to share your experience? Submit an article to support the industry. And as a digital format, you can use it as your own marketing tool. Send it, post it, share it. The Philanthropeneur radio show is available at philanthropeneur.com for all resources. Thank you again for joining us on the Philanthropeneur Show. Make sure to tune in Wednesday, November 6th, and guest Dr. Craig Brown, the senior partner and CEO of STEM Resources, as he shares his journey as a entrepreneur, educator, and philanthropist. Thank you for tuning in to the Philanthropeneur Radio Show, hosted by Dr. Victoria Boyd. Get involved. Follow us on Facebook and other social media outlets. If you wish to share comments or suggestions or appear as a guest on our show, visit www.thephilanthropeneur.com. Contact Victoria Boyd. Email her at theboyd at thephilanthropeneur.com. The Philanthropeneur Radio Show is a production of and sponsored by the Philanthropeneur Foundation, a 501c3 tax-deductible organization.